Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone had a good weekend and having a good week so far. Well, the 900 has uh, came and went, so this will be a reflection and everything from uh, shooting the 900. I hate, I'm sorry that I don't really have any video to show you guys, but it's been raining this whole entire week, and this week, the past weekend was the exact same thing. Uh, Went and got there first thing in the morning. Got there early to go shoot and everything. Um, it was drizzling rain, so I figured, hey, you know, it ain't going to be that bad to shoot in the rain. A little bit of drizzle, that's not bad at all. Right before we started shooting, it started, the bottom fell out. It started raining really hard. And, of course, you have to shoot the full round or the full tournament to get credit and, you know, that's just the way it goes, right? If there's no lightning, it doesn't get called. So that's what happened. There wasn't too many people that showed up to shoot the state 900, you know, because all the rain and everything. No one really wanted to drive three hours to go shoot in the rain. I, you know, I really don't want to, especially if they're calling for it, you know. So uh, the only people that showed up was uh, five adults and three kids that shot, I think, in the youth division. I think youth division. Yeah, so um, if you guys never shot the 900 before, an NFAA 900 is 60, 50, 40 yards. A WA 900 is 60, 50, 40 meters. So there's a little big, there is a difference in it. Um, not by much, but there is a difference. So that's what went on. Um, right before we started shooting, you know, of course, the bottom fell out, and everybody's like, oh, crap. We're going to have to shoot and get soaking wet, you know, for the next couple hours. So what they decided to do was uh, put canopies up, little canopy tents up, you know, the 10 by 10s for us to shoot up underneath, which wasn't too bad if you were shooting compound. Um, of course, shooting, this is the first year I shot the... Uh, 900 as a barebow recurve which was pretty interesting it was fun but shooting up underneath the um, tent the canopy did cause some problems um, shooting it every time I raised my bow up I kept on hitting the top of the canopy um, and especially I wasn't in the center of the canopy I was to the side of the canopy so I didn't have, you know, the full length above or whatever, um, so which caused problems for me, of course. Um, I would raise it up, I would hit it or whatever, or I would, you know, fill it, and then whenever I was going back into my shot cycle rhythm or whatever you want to call it, um, I couldn't really get into my um, back tension as good as I wanted to and my form was completely off because of it so the first couple um, rounds I kept on smacking my arm trying to figure out how you know I need to stand up underneath this thing where I won't hit the top and everything so it was it was a chore trying to do all that but I mean that was one thing that was the first thing is if you're gonna shoot and you know it's gonna rain uh, you better have another way of shooting if you're gonna shoot up underneath a canopy the way I shoot is like most of the Olympic, Olympic recurves shoot they go up to their eyebrows and then they come back down so if you do that up underneath a canopy you will hit the canopy every single time and I was only shooting a 66 inch recurve so I would imagine if I shot a 70 inch or something, I would have a hard time. Yeah. So that was the first thing. And then the other thing, since you're shooting up underneath the canopy and it's raining so hard, the runoff off the canopy, that was the other thing. So you're trying to shoot it, shoot, and then it's raining really hard coming off the canopy. Then it looks like a waterfall coming off of it in front of you. And you're trying to shoot through it, 60 yards at the target. Yeah, so that 
caused somewhat of a problem too. She's trying to shoot through it, but it was pretty cool shooting through it because on some of them that was like, you know, a downpour. As soon as you shot through it, um, and your arrow is spinning, you can see the water flying off your arrow, which was pretty cool to see. Um, but that was about it for the the canopy and everything. Um, and then of course once we moved to 50 yards. We had to move the canopy, so we did that, and then the canopy wasn't all the way, you know, past the line as, as much as it needed to be. So then I had uh, problems hitting the canopy again then, and then I had to figure out where I needed to try to move to and not, you know, get so close to the person beside me because there was uh, three people shooting up, up underneath a 10 by 10 canopy, and we were still getting soaking wet. Um, the rain, like where I set my bow at on my stand and everything, it was it still got soaking wet even up underneath the canopy. So every time I shot and put it down, then pick up the umbrella and then we would walk down there to the target to score our arrows and everything. And then I would get wet then, then come back, and then I had to turn around and take a towel, dry off my grip because my grip was soaking wet and everything too. The string was, you know, water was dripping off the string, so I plucked my string a couple times to get the water off of it. And then, of course, my, you know, arrows and everything, and I was shooting the excess spin wings. So I was really worried at first about shooting in a downpour that, you know, the spin wings are... Um, the excess wings, I'm sorry, are held on by, you know, two-sided tape. So I was worried that, you know, after shooting all this in the rain that the tape would start messing up and give me problems and then, you know, more and more problems shooting. But uh, it didn't. It held up the whole entire uh, tournament which was nice. I was happy for that. I didn't mess up. Only one arrow, one of the wings came off because I either hit um, the guy's arrow that was shooting with me or he hit my arrow, one or the other, but only one of them came off. So after shooting in the rain for from 9 o'clock all the way to 12, 12 o'clock, 12.30, I didn't have any problems, so that was really, really good. Um, but there was three people shooting at one target bell. Last year, there was four of us shooting at one. So you can imagine, you know, how many arrows will get busted up that way. But since it was raining, everyone had a hard time shooting. Even the people that were, like, semi-pro that was shooting with us, they had a hard time shooting too. Um, but that was about it. For that, uh, my um, the other thing was my finger tab. Afterwards, I'll show you a photo up there, or whatever, of my uh, tab hand. My uh, fingers was waterlocked; they was all wrinkled and everything too. The tab ended up dying my three fingers. So it was um, it was fun shooting it. I did have fun shooting it, and everything. It was just soaking wet. I mean, but hey, if you love shooting and you love uh, what you're doing, then hey, who cares if it's raining or not, right? So uh, here's my score. My score wasn't, it, I wish it was better than what it was, but you know, for whatever, for what I went through, I'll be, I'm more than happy to take it. Um, plus, I believe most likely I'm the only one that shot in the bare bow division. Just like when I shot the international, I was the only one in the bare bow division, so I won it. And I would imagine this time I'll probably be the only one that shot bare bow this year too. Uh, when I shot the international, there was two guys that shot um, what you call it, traditional, because they gap shot. There was gap shooting, and I string walk. That's the only really difference. So uh, 60 yards. I ended up shooting a uh, 193 out of 300, which, you know, 60 yards with a bare bow is uh, fun to do. I ended up averaging 6.5 uh, 
points an arrow. What I was trying to do is with this tournament, I wanted to shoot at least a 700, and I wanted to at least shoot all arrows or average all arrows in the red. I didn't want to average any any outside of the red. Okay, so that's what I was trying to do. So I ended up shooting a 6.5, which is not averaging in the red. Came close, but it wasn't. So, um, yeah, the 193 in average 6.5. So uh, 50 yards, it was the same thing. Um, as soon as we moved to target, like I said, or moved to canopy, like I said before, my first round sucked because I kept on hitting the, you know, the canopy, and then I would drop back down, then move over a little bit or something, shoot again, and everything. So I ended up with a... Um, 226 out of you know 30 arrows and I averaged 7.5 points point per arrow which was pretty good um, my ends were a 37 46 51 44 and a 48 so that was that was that 60 yards I'll go back to 60 yards and tell you. 60 yards, I ended up shooting a 48, a 39, a 33, and a 43. Yeah, so I got a lot of room to improve on that. And then uh, 40 yards, I ended up shooting a uh, 233 and averaging 7.7 .7 points per arrow. And mine was a 40, 50, 48, 48, and a 47. So, that's my score. Yeah. So, now, all I have to do, now I have to just work on it, right? Trying to get better and better and better, right? So, um, that's what, how it was. Um, it was fun. I was happy. So, now, my next uh, tournament don't really have any more tournaments because I'll be uh, moving across country of course in a month and a half so my archery for right now will be going to the side I guess until um, I get over there and start you know finding the archery range around me and the tournaments that's around me and stuff like that okay so um, the only one I have coming up it's in two weeks and it's just a local 3D shoot. It's a ASA qualifier. And it's a food bank charity um, shoot too. So that's all I'll be doing. That'll be the only one I have coming up. So um, in the next couple of videos, it's just going to be me sh just shooting my bow, really. Um, I do have a new finger tab that I will be trying to trying out and everything and doing probably a review on it. So that one will be coming up too. So uh, stay tuned to that one. And that's it for now. So um, take it easy, be safe, and shoot straight, guys.